subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, Nets. Welcome once again, as I always say, Nets, you are welcome to Junior High School Hour on Joy Learning TV. I am your facilitator, Nedite. Isaac Ohinamankwa, who is going to take you through computing. And today, we are still continuing what we did in our previous lessons, in our two previous lessons, internet and social media. Um, since we are talking about social media, why don't you take the time and go onto our social media on Facebook, on Instagram, at what, Joy Learning TV, and you can still catch up with our old lessons. When you miss me, don't worry. Just hop onto your social media and you see me there. Okay. As I said, we are going to continue with what social media and the internet. Now, from our previous lessons, we started by defining what social media is. And we went ahead to talk about a whole lot of things, the Facebooks, the, the WhatsApps, what they are. Now, I want us to have a little review before we get into today's lesson. Now, um, we said that in defining social media, we can say that it is what? It covers all services that promote. Remember, I said these are keywords. Promotes, create, or promotes the creation and sharing and exchange of content. So social media is all about what? Content creation sharing and promotion now social media we can also say are interactive internet based technologies that facilitate the creation or the sharing of what information ideas career interests and other forms of expressions through virtual communication now remember I said when we talk about career interest, there is one social media app that stands out. And which one do you think it is? Any, can anyone give me an answer? You are right. We are talking about what LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the number one career or career interest or career based social media, um, how do you call it, platforms. I remember what I said on LinkedIn it is not about the number of followers or the number of people you are following it is about the quality of people you are following make sure that they are within your what career circle well maybe you might think you are in the JHS or basic seven and I am not ready for career well you should know your career by now you should know your career and you work work towards that career so we are looking at you working towards your career. And if you're working towards your career, then you should know some of these things so that it can help you boost your career. Okay, we went ahead to talk about the types of social um, media. And we said we have what we call the social networking and the, what, the microblogging. That means they are grouped into what? Two groups, social networking and microblogging. We said social networking is the platform that you, people use to build a network of people who have similar interest, similar interest or similar ideas, the connection or how to connect to people who have similar interest with you. So that is what social networking. They include Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, WhatsApp, Snapchat, YouTube, and the others. So you can use this channel to what, link up to people who you have interest or similar interest with. Now, when we talk about the next one or the other one, which is micro-blogging. We said micro-blogging is simply, um, how do we say it? A platform that shows the user to share, or that allows the user to share small or minute content i won't put it as minute but small content which uh, might be a picture in the form of a picture a sentence anything that communicates towards people of interest 
So in all aspects, we are looking at what? Interest, content creation, and sharing. Because this three is key to what? Social media. Interest, content sharing, and what? Um, creation, content creation. So this include, the micro blogs include Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, we have Instagram, and we also have TikTok. So you should know what you put on what Instagram or TikTok. Remember, when we mentioned the benefits or the importance of this microblogging and social media, we may mention that we have two aspects. We have two aspects. And these two aspects include one, the business aspect, and two, the interpersonal aspects. I hope you get it. The business aspect and the personal aspect. And remember, there was a third leg, which is what you can combine the two business and personal issues or purposes. So when we talk about business, where we communicate with our people, we put our products online for people to purchase through social media. It's possible and people are doing it, but be very careful. There are fosters out there the fastest out there and when we were done with our previous lesson i gave you an assignment to do for me i hope you did it because i'll be expecting it i'll be expecting i'll be inspecting my assignment today so let's look at the solutions to the assignment let's look at the solutions to our assignment and let's see how best how best you did no cheating. I am not there to catch you, but I don't cheat. I trust you. You are a nerd, so you don't cheat. So, the first question was, what is social networking? What is social networking? When we talk about social networking, I've already defined it, but it says what? It is the use of internet-based social media platforms. The use of what? internet-based social media platforms to stay connected with friends, family, or peers. Social networking can have a social purpose and what a business purpose or both. So when you are asked to define social networking, you can easily say what it is the use of internet-based social media platforms to stay connected with what? Friends, family, and peers. Simple, you are done with your definition. Now, the second question stated that list four types of social media sites. And we made mention of them. We said we can have what? Facebook, we can have YouTube, we can have WhatsApp, Instagram, LinkedIn, WeChat and a whole lot, a whole lot. Google Plus is also there. I know you know a lot, even more than I do. Okay, so what is microblogging? Microblogging. We said microblogging is a general term for the concept of posting very short status updates as popularized by services like what? LinkedIn and, uh, sorry, Tumblr and Twitter. So you are posting what? Short status update. This is very key. Posting of what? Very short status update. That is all about micro. And remember, micro means what? Short or small. Okay. Now the third question says, write down two examples of micro blogging. Two examples of micro blogging websites. We have twitter.com that's www.twitter.com and we also have www.tamla.com this is the solution for our assignment and i hope you had it you had all correct if you didn't don't worry better luck next time try again or visit our old lesson or the previous lesson go through the lesson and you understand it better are you ready for today's lesson? 
for those who just joined in, this is Junior High School Hour, and we are having computing. Today, our topic is what? Internet and the social media. The internet and social media. Today, we are going to move a little further from the social media and zoom in to what we call email. But we are going to focus on what? Creation of an email. And if time permits us, we will go into composing and writing of an email. But well, if time does not permit, then we will have to move to our next lesson with what? Creating and composing of what? Internet. Oh, sorry, email. Okay. So I want us to get our books and our phones, our laptops, our electrical, electronic gadgets, our technological gadgets that can help you in this lesson. But basically, if you have your phone or you have a laptop, it will do for us. So let's go. So in creating an email. If you want to have access to most social media sites, it normally requires two things. One, either an email or a phone number. An email or a phone number. Now, if you don't have a phone number, then an email will do for you. And to be able to have access to this thing, first you should know how to create one. If you are done with creating an email, you can easily go ahead to sign up for any of the social media platforms. Even though they also act as email, they also need um, a sort of uh, hook that they can rely on. Let's say if someone should send you a message on Facebook and you are not readily available on Facebook, at least if you are connected or you've connected your email to your Facebook, you will receive an email from Facebook that you have a message on Facebook. So it sort of help us with what our day-to-day -day activities when it comes to social media handling. Okay, so we are going to look at Gmail. We are going to look at Gmail. Now, to be able to have a Gmail account, there are four requirements, four requirements. The first one is an email service provider. An email service provider. I know most of you be saying, what is an email service provider? What is an email service provider? Yes. Email service providers are like internet service providers. Or maybe telecommunication service providers, like the, the likes of MTN, Vodafone, um, Casapa. We have Glow, we have Teledata. All these companies offer what we call telecommunication solutions or telecommunication um, services. So email service providers are companies that provide email services. Simple. Or that help you to have an email account and its related services. An example is Google. Please, not Gmail. Gmail is a product of Google. So if you're talking about an email service provider, we can readily say Google is one. Then we can also talk about Yahoo. We can talk about what? Yahoo. This as email service providers. Uh, what do you think we can talk about again? Do you have any idea of any email service provider? Well, if you have, then good for you. If you don't, just go onto the internet and just type email service providers. You will have a lot of them, a whole lot of them. Okay. Well, let me give you the one last one. You can have what we call Firefox. Thunderbird, Firefox Thunderbird, simple. That's one other email service provider. Or you can say email. Email itself is a service provider. Let me add just one more. Outlook, and Outlook comes from Microsoft. 
Outlook comes from what? Microsoft. Now, what is an email itself? What is an email if you should come across this question? What do you say? Email stands for electronic mail. It is just the a name given to a service that allows you to send messages electronically. It helps you send messages or attachments or message with attachments electronically. So when you are defining an email, it is easy to say what? It is a service that allows you to send messages electronically. Okay. Now, the second thing that you will need is what we call a user name. A user name. Now, everyone has a name. But you can bear with me that when you are standing in a crowd of let's say 100 people and you should hear the name Isaac probably about 5 or 6 let's say 10 people might turn or respond to the name Isaac so who is the one calling referring to that will become a problem so when we are talking about username it's a name that specifically identifies you the email user on that platform or on the platform of the email service providers platform it is what the name that identifies you in person so someone can choose a name like um let me use log well if you try log it will not go through probably someone might have taken it uh, so log, someone can say, um, I like to use this word a lot, prime, yeah, someone can use prime, someone can also even spell the prime as P-R-I-M-E, so it depends on how you spell your name, so if there are 100 primes, they might all have a unique way of spelling their prime. That makes it what? Different. Okay. Then the next thing that you need is what? A password. And when I say a password, we need a very strong password. Why a very strong password? A very strong password because it is easy for people, um, I don't want to say like us, or easy for people, <laughs> people... Um, let me see, I don't want to put them as criminals. Not every, um, let's say, hacker is a criminal. Actually, hacking is divided into two groups. We have the white hats, that are the ethical hackers. They look for flaws. They look for flaws or errors in systems, and they try to point it out. They, their work is genuine business. They don't do it maliciously. But people who have malicious intent, who have evil intent, and want to steal from you or have a way of um, taking something from you, information, data, money, whatever from you, they will easily be able to break into your password if you use a simple password. Let me tell you this um, scenario. I was chatting with a friend, and I was having that friend's phone. So as we were talking, I was asking questions through our communication. And the phone was locked. At the end of our conversation, I gave the person's, my friend's phone to him. I had already opened the phone. How did I get to open the phone? As we were chatting, I was just picking information. I was just picking details or information for his password. So trying to use a very simple or easy password can easily be identified or can easily be cracked. So most email service providers have decided that to have a strong password, it must carry one, a capital letter or what we call uppercase. Two, it must have numbers included. And three, it must have what we call um, a character included, a character like um, a comma, 
um, question mark, anything that will make it very difficult for the person to break. But don't worry, um, even with that one, they have ways and means to, um, you know, get information from you. But you have to be careful on the internet. You have to be careful. Okay, so we are going to show a video, a video of how to create an email account. How to create an email account. And with this one, we are going to take um, or create it from one of the email service providers, that's Google. After that, we'll go to Yahoo and see how far we can go with the lesson. So let's start. So I want us to watch um, the video very carefully. Now, for this lesson, we are going to open Google. So we are going to use a different platform that is a private tab that will not allow me to log in directly into my Gmail, but rather open a Gmail new, a fresh or a new Gmail for me to use. So the page is loading now. Now, this is the interface for Gmail. And the first thing you see is sign in to continue to Gmail. If you don't have an account, you first go to what? Create account. But if you have, you can use your email or your phone to create it. Now, when you click on create account, it asks you, it asks you a question. For, is it for personal use, for my child, or for work or business? That means we can create an email for three different people. One, for a child. Two, for personal use. And three, for work. So we are using for personal use. So we are going through the personal use portal. So we have our details to fill out. So filling out our details. And when you are filling your details, anything or when you don't see any um, part of the um, form marked as optional, that means it's compulsory you fill that part. If you don't fill, you will not be able to move forward in the creation of the email. And in writing or in typing your username, your preferred username, Remember, someone might have taken your username already. And there are certain characters you cannot use, like the underscores, the hyphens, you cannot use them. They prefer you use uh, periods or what we call a full stop. So you can use a full stop. When you still use it and it seems someone has taken it, the names or suggestions will be made for you. If you look on our screens right now, you can see that we have what? Suggestions available, which is Pride Tech 41, Pride Tech 1992. We have Tech Prime 340. So you choose any of them and you are done. Now, we go to our password section. And in our password session, we, um, since I'm using Firefox browser, what it did for me is that it suggested a password for me it generated a password for me and this password is complicated numbers mixed with um, how do we call it characters and a whole lot and they are, it's a very lengthy one so for someone to break this um, password it will be difficult so you can choose to use the password generated by Firefox or your computer or if you want you can go ahead to choose your own but I chose to what take the one generated by what the computer so after that you click on what next now over here you realize that the guy we have the flag of Ghana over here and a phone number which is marked optional that means you are not mandated to 
put in any phone number. You are not mandated. It is not mandatory that you put in any phone number. So you enter a phone number if you prefer the phone number or you can use an email if you prefer that one. Now, the reason why we use an email or a phone number is simply to help us recover our email or password in case we misplace it or we forget it. So after that, you enter your date of birth. You enter your date of birth. So it's entered. So let's use 19, 1985, 875 as date of birth, 1975. Then let's go to gender, gender. Please, when you get to the gender column, we have the male and we have the female. We have rather not say and I think customize, but we know male and female. If you choose not to show your gender, well, it's fine. Maybe you don't want people, you want to be a criminal. So you don't want people to know who you are. Well, you can still choose a female if you're a male. And you can choose a male if you're a female. That is still lies. But to be truthful, you choose who you are, a male or a female. When you're done, you come to your agreement section and you accept the agreement. Now, the reason why we have an agreement section is simple. There are activities that Google cannot use your email for. They cannot share your email to anyone without your permission. But within their agreement or conditions, there are some clauses where they might say, you might use your email for promotion. If you agree or you accept, that means you can, they, you can, they can use your email for whatever they said they want to use it for. But if you do not agree, it cannot be used and also you cannot create the email account. Okay, so this is the interface for our Gmail. After creating your Gmail, this is what you have. When you open your first mail, this is what you have. Just an introduction to Google Mail or Gmail. In our later lessons, what we will do is we will go back to the interface and look at the constituents, what makes the interface, the features. We look at the compose, inbox, the sent, draft, a whole lot. We look at them and we'll move ahead. Okay, so that is for Gmail. Now, let's create an email in Yahoo. Let's create an email in Yahoo. So in creating an email in Yahoo, it's also very, very simple. We are going to, this is Google, so we are going to change it to Yahoo. We start typing. Now, I typed ymail.com and I had one in potential risk ahead. Probably that website address certificate has expired or there's a problem with that website address. So it normally prompts you with what security risk that if you go on it, it's not, it's not secured. But I now chose to use what? Yahoo.com so that I can use Yahoo.com to get my email address. Okay, so now we are typing and we are waiting for Yahoo to open. Now, Yahoo has opened now. And on Yahoo, we can have mail. In our menu, we have mail, we have news, so you just click on mail, since we are going to create an email, so you click on mail. Then, you click on sign up. Now, if you see something like upgrade to mail plus, these are, um, how do we call it, email services, which are quite different from what we used to we normally have. They, they, they go beyond our normal email services. And... One thing I forgot to tell you, Google gives you 15 gig of storage space or cloud storage space. So maybe if you are 
if you want to have a lot of space on Google, you can increase it. You can purchase it. So in Yahoo, we have started creating, we put our first name, second name, then our Yahoo ID or user name. That is new Yahoo email. Your user name, including the service provider's address, makes what we call an email address. So we are almost done. And you can see from this section that we have big prime at yahoo.com. Now I'm entering my phone number so that I can easily recover my password in case I forget. Now immediately you enter a phone number which has been used on Yahoo before, you'll be prompted that this phone number has been used before. So you can't use it. You have to use one which has not been used. So my code is in. So I'll enter my code very soon. The code is entered. Okay, it says creating, creating. So we have we are we have a success. We are done with creating of what an email in Yahoo. So this is the Yahoo interface. The Yahoo interface. This is how Yahoo also appears. The Yahoo interface. Very simple. And they have similar features when you come to Gmail. They are very similar. They are very similar. Okay. So we are done with the two. Now, let's, let me see something. I want to see if you can write down the steps we used in creating the email address. The email address. I want you to write something down and let's see. I will show you the steps, but I'm giving you 30 seconds or let's say a minute to write something down. Then we can go into what I have. So the time starts now. By this time, you should be getting to the end. Maybe my, my time might be short because some of us might write slow. Not a problem. Don't write anything lengthy. When you are asked to write steps, it should be short and precise. Just go straight to the point. Don't add a whole lot of things. Okay, so let's see. Now, in opening an email, the first thing you need to do is what? Launch a browser or open your internet browser. You have to launch your browser. And I hope you have not forgotten how to launch a browser. Actually, there are three ways of launching a browser. You can have more than three, but let's stick to three. The first one is to, if the browser, the icon of the browser is on your desktop, is to what? right click on the icon and select open to launch that is the first one then the second one you can click and you can press enter key on the keyboard that will be the second time way of launching the third way of launching is by double clicking well what if you don't have the icon on the desktop but you know definitely the browser you want to use it's on your computer. Then what you have to do is first click on start button and go to what we call programs. Then you scroll down to where you can locate your browser. Then you click on it. Now, after launching your browser, you go to your address bar and type in your Gmail or Yahoo, whatever you want to use. If it's a Gmail or Yahoo, you type on it. Then you click on mail for Yahoo. 
but Gmail takes you directly to where you can create your account. Now, there is a greater possibility that your you are not the only one using that phone or that laptop. So when you go to Gmail, it might log into another person's account. Well, the best thing you need to do is tell the person to log out first. So I will advise you that anytime you log into any account, log out before you leave the computer, if you are not the only one who uses it. Okay, don't worry, I will teach you where to log out. So don't worry. Now, after you have entered your address and you have gone through the process, gone to Gmail, then you click on what? Create account. Create account. On Yahoo, it is not create account, but you can rather find what? Sign up. They are virtually the same. Sign up or what? Create account. So let me just put sign up. Okay. Now, on the new page provided, fill in your details. Fill in your details on the new page provided. Fill in your details. When you are done filling everything that you are required to fill and by accepting, then you can click on what? Submit or done. Then you are done with what? Creating an email. Very simple. Just fill on the new page. Provide provide the details required. Just provide the details. That is what required. What they, they need you to write, write them or fill it. That is all. Then you click on submit or done. So that is very simple. You can take a snapshot of it or you can write it in your books. If you are writing, you can write it in your books. Now, there are certain age groups which are not allowed or permitted in some countries or by or per our, how do we call it? Um, let me say, internet laws or the laws governing the use of the internet, there are certain groups of people who are not allowed to operate an email. It is people who range it from birth to 12 years old. From birth to 12 years old, you cannot operate an email account. It is not the, um, easy to operate unless you have an adult who controls that account for you. So let's see the process. Very simple. Very simple. So now I'm going to log out. I'm going to sign out right now. Log out and sign out are virtually the same thing. So I'm signing out here. This is how to sign out. You click on your what? Your profile. Then you click on sign out. Now when you click on sign out, automatically Okay, this one is details about your account. It's not necessary. Click on sign out. Click on the sign out. Then we have a page open for you. Now this page, you have what? Your, 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 your email is still open, but you have other options. So you can remove the person um, that e um, email from there or add another account. So right here, we are going to create another account. So we click on the age limit, then it gives us 13. Now, what you have to do is you have to get permission of mommy, from mommy or daddy or elder brother or whoever is helping you in creating the account to create the account. You understand? Because they will need their details. That's their email address or their phone number so that they can easily monitor that email address. It is not for any other reason, but there are some unscrupulous people out there who can easily harm you, who can easily use other means to get to you through your email. So they need to protect you. They need to protect you. So we are filling in the details like we did for the old one. Like we did for the one, the personal use. We are filling in the details.
So we are entering the password. Now, when you enter the password, when you are alone or you don't want anyone to see your password, always make sure you click on show password to make sure that the two passwords match. If they don't match, you will not be able to go through. It will give you errors that they do not match. Okay. So we are done with that. Over here, your birthday, your date of birth will be needed. You have to fill in your date of birth. So we are using 2012, which is not yet um, up to 13 years. That will be approximately 11 years, if I'm not wrong. 11 years. No, it's not 11. It's even 10 years. Still 10 years. Not yet June. Then, after that, you need your parent to sign in. This is what I was talking about. So mommy or daddy needs to sign in. And over here, you need mommy's phone number or mommy's email address or daddy's phone number or daddy's email address. So you need them here or your elder brother, your elder sister, whoever is helping you in creating the email. So you need their email address or their phone number. If you do it without their consent or without their knowledge, what happens is that immediately you click on next, a message will be sent to them and they will have to approve before you continue or you can finish with your email creation. If you don't get an approval, uh, that means you can't create your email. So, parent needs to approve. So, over here, privacy policy, so that no one will impede your, pri your privacy. Then, daddy or mommy will have to enter the, his or her password. Or your brother or your sister or the one who's helping you have to enter the password. When the password is done, now you have successfully created an email account. So, a prompt will be sent to the phone to verify that he or she is the one who entered the password. Okay, now we scroll down, we scroll down, click on next, okay, say created your, you created an account for Prime, so your, an account has been created. So we are opening the first email address for Prime, who is below 13 years. So this is the interface for Prime's email. And you realize that he didn't receive, he or she didn't receive what? Any email. Any welcome message. Okay. So that is it for. I don't think we need to rewatch. We'll bring our lesson to a close here so that we can have, or the next time we meet, we can go into the interface of Gmail. But before then, remember in creating, in creating an email, you have to what? have, uh, how do we call it, a username, a password, or, uh, sorry, and you have to know your email service provider. Remember, and don't forget, if you are below 13 years, mommy or daddy needs to help you. And the steps in creating an email is very simple. One, you have to launch your email address. Sorry, you have to launch a browser 
or open your browser. Then two, you then type in your ESP, that's your email service provider's website. So it could be Google, gmail.com or yahoo.com. Then you click on mail or yahoo, but on gmail, it opens for you. To create, you have to select what? Create account. In Yahoo, you have to select sign up. After signing up, you fill the necessary portions or the necessary documents. Then you can easily what? How do we call it? Click on submit if you are done with everything. When you are done with that, you have your email address. Don't forget your password. There's a way to retrieve a password, but that will be next time. So, as I said, we are on Joy Learning TV, and this is the Junior High School Hour. I am Isaac Ohina Mankwa, your facilitator for ICT. Well, to, till we meet again in our next lesson. Don't forget, and don't stop being a nerd. It's bye-bye. YouTube channel Joy Learning TV.